Welcome back. This week, New York City public school students start classes on Thursday, and officials say thousands of migrant children will be among them. But there are growing concerns by some borough leaders about how the city is preparing to handle the influx of migrant students, especially on the issue of vaccination requirements. Joining us this morning, Staten Island Borough President Vito Fasella. Vito, thanks so much for talking with us this morning. Can you hear us, Vito? I can hear you. Can you hear me? All right, yes, now great. We got you. Hey, just talk to us real fast about the issue concerning you with migrant kids and vaccination requirements. Are, are they the same as kids that are already enrolled in, in the public school system? Uh, believe it or not, uh, the migrant children get sort of an extra lift. In other words, um, the ordinary parent has to demonstrate that their child has all the immunizations or vaccinations for in, for diseases that determine uh, you need vaccines for. And you, if you don't demonstrate that, you don't go to school. Hmm. Uh, migrant children don't have that. So what do they uh, have right words, now? The city, the city saying uh, you can enroll in school. You don't have to prove that you have your all vaccines, immunization. And then who knows? And what we said is that it's just not right. Yeah. Uh, why would you want to put other kids in danger and teachers and administrators? Take care of that mm -hmm. uh, and hold those migrant children to the same standard as everybody else. Absolutely. I'm sure a lot of parents agree with you. Um, I know that this week or last week, New York State's Commissioner of Education, Dr. Betty Rose, and Attorney General Letitia James, they issued a letter reiterating to the public that the children of asylum seekers are subject to the exact same immunization requirements that apply to every other student. So what is the lift that they're getting and why is it not the same as every other student? Uh, you know, this is just emblematic of the migrant crisis. There's really been no great plan since day one. They claim it's an emergency, but it's an emergency they created. If they didn't anticipate that that kids needed vaccines and you're on the eve of you know, the opening day of school, I, I don't I think that's the first question they should be asking. And Mr. If you want to send the kids to school, they need to be vaccinated. But there are those who say they don't. And what we're just suggesting is take a step back. Don't put other kids in harm's way or teachers and others. Take care of the, the migrant children. And, and hold them to the same standard. And right now, that's not happening. And Mr. Bro President, I mean, we're talking about inoculations for things like tetanus and polio, hepatitis, measles. I mean, these are the things, if you're a parent, you're very familiar with it. You have to go and yeah. fill out the form and make sure that the school system has them. They're saying there's about a 30-day lead time when they don't have to have these inoculations yet. I mean, is there a concern that that, that could be something, that there, that's a time period where there could be some problems? Yeah, and, and, and even those 30-day uh, waving, what, if you want to call it a waiver, was for a handful of kids who showed up, not not tens of thousands. That's happening in the migrant crisis, and it's a, in addition to the ones that you uh, highlight, mumps are among others, and some of these children may be exposed to other types of diseases that they're immune to. They become carriers. They go into a classroom and could spread it among other kids, a disease that perhaps the kids are not vaccinated for it and uh well again we it's sort of basic to me and that is just have, hold everybody to the same standard assuming you want the kids to go to school and you had a press conference over the weekend where you voiced your concerns as well voicing them here have you heard from the doe about any of this no we have not um but we will keep pressing and it's not as you say a parent uh who, who's bringing their kid to school has no recourse if they can't demonstrate the kid's not vaccinated. And you play by those set of rules. And I don't understand why we're turning the world upside down to accommodate others from other countries who've been here a week, a month, three months, and saying, hey, guess what? You get a free pass, other parents don't. So we're gonna keep arguing that and hopefully common sense prevails and insanity sort of takes us the side door and we just do what's right for everybody too. Speaking about the migrants, I know that there was a lot of protests over that St. John's Villa migrant uh, shelter. How is that going? And, and, and I know the community feels a certain way, but 
I feel like the city is not understanding those issues and they might just bulldoze right on through if that's the case. Right, for those who don't know, this is called the, the Saint, an old uh, St. John Villa. It's an old girls school. It's been vacant for a few years. It's right across the street from an old girls Catholic school. I mean, like 50 feet away, two elementary schools and in the heart of a residential neighborhood. And we're, well, we said this is the totally wrong place for a migrant shelter. Um, we have been out in force, and not just the, the Aracar section or South Beach section, it's across that island. Everybody recognizes the bad spot, but migrants have come in. And what we're saying is that, again, on the eve of school, shut the place down mm. and move the individual someplace else. Hence. And don't put the parents or children of potential harm's way or, or that or that beautiful neighborhood. And Mr. Fasella, you know, these are pitched as short-term facilities, but all indications are it could be a, a while, a long time, that many of these people are going to be staying in some of these shelters. Is there any sense of trying to work with the city to make it work? It looks like it's going to happen. It's moving forward. H how do you move forward now that it's already sort of steamrolling in that uh, direction? Yeah, I get it. Uh, but, uh, but about a year ago, less than a year ago, we said this whole policy was going to be unsustainable because it's like drinking out of a fire hose. You, know, you open up at the, the borders, then everybody comes here and says get, they get free accommodations and free food and free everything else. Why wouldn't they go? Yeah. So it doesn't appear that there's an end in sight. This is a legitimate crisis. Now there's a drum, uh, beat the drum. And what we're saying is enough. Don't keep opening up the door of New York City and allow individuals to come here and say we're going to stay here indefinitely. Well, you it know, doesn't work. unless the right to shelter law changes in the near future, then That's I right. think that this is going to be continuously a problem. Uh, just to, on, on record, though, because we're talking but about congestion. Stop you there, one second, please. Uh, it's not a right to shelter law. It's not a law. It's not in the Constitution. It's a consent decree that should be modified. And I didn't mean to interrupt, but I just think folks should need to know that. Yeah, which the judge is overlooking currently, and we have no word yet on where right. that stands. Congestion pricing, though, because last time we talked about you um, really pushing hard back about this, possibly a lawsuit. Is there is there any traction with that? Yeah, we, we've actually been spent the last few weeks uh, uh, basically putting together what our, our best case will be. Uh, Staten Islanders will be disproportionately harmed, in part because we're very car dependent. We already have a toll on the Verrazano Bridge or the, or the Hugh Carey Tunnel, and now they want to impose another one. And the MTA's own study said that the quality of the air will get worse, traffic will get worse, and we'll have to pay for it. Hmm. And I think, once again, it's common sense. Why would we want this? So we're going to pre prepare to and file a, a lawsuit to, to stop it from happening. No shortage of concerns. Peter Fasello, Staten Island Borough President, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you.